Boy of Joy. I, the Reverend Dr. Stephen D. Lewis Sr., serve as pastor. Welcome, welcome. Join in with us. Come on, come call somebody. Call someone, call your family, call your friends, and help them to tune in because we know somebody who will fight your battles. We know somebody who will heal your hurts. We know somebody who will calm your fears. And if nobody else will, Jesus will. www.chewbindmbchurch.org Go to the contribution page and give as God bless you to give. You can give by way of give the file also. Praise the Lord. True Baptist Church of Dixmore. Dixmore. There's a lot of true out there. 
make sure you give to the big sports you run. Praise God. It makes a difference. <laughs> to those who care to be a blessing to the pastor, you can go to the sale. Sale 708-612-8700. Or you can use Cash App. Reverend SDL. R-E-B-S-D-L. And as always, those who are desirous of prayer, call up prayer line 708-385-1132. Someone who will get back with you and will pray with you, pray you through. We thank God for you. Praise God. We do want to announce that we have a new preacher at your mind. Minister Fanta Williams. Sunday afternoon, we go. Great day. Come back to support. Stand, stand up real quick and then somebody will not go. Yeah, then the whole team will see you. We're looking forward to that with great expectations. He has a word from the Lord. Amen. I'm certain of that. All right. Continue to pray for all of our sick and those who are coalescing. We ask a special prayer for our own sister Judith Cook. Amen. Our daughter Evelyn Keener went on to be with the Lord. We say, no, sister Cook, we're with you. We're praying with you. God will give you strength to face these challenges that you have today. All right. Let's go to music ministry with the voices of Chuba. Under the direction of our own sister Hope Lewis.
Over and over. Over and over. It keeps on. Continuously. It doesn't stop me. I think he's done. He's got something else for me. But he's got me. Keeps on opening doors. And making way. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. As we approach the throne of grace. And we're going to ask Reverend Oye Yimmy, make your way. This week we're praying as the fourth state of Sister Judith Cook and family. We're praying for our own sister, the old Griffin. Sister Heather Smith, we're praying continuously. We're praying for Kenneth Brown Jr., the son of our sister Patricia Brown. Sister Sue Shirley, Sister Ruthie McShane, Sister Michelle Wynn, Brother Corin McShane, Brother Alan Ray Ray King, Sister Louise King Elston, Sister Teresa Matthews, Sister Deborah Shiga, Sister Clara Blakes, we're praying for you. Sister Deborah Carter, Sister Sheila Dunn, good to see you today. Good to see you. We're praying for you. Sister Ann Davis and Sister Ethel Bowling, we're praying. God can do what no other power. Because you are God of the universe. 
There is no where all over the world that your name is not glorified. And we have come to true mind this particular hour to glorify your name. Take glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Take glory, Son, in Jesus' name. And take glory, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. We are here glorifying your name. The same way Jesus Christ has glorified your name. And you have glorified him. Father, as we glorify you, glorify us also in our situation. And I am praying that in any situation that you might have found yourself in 2023, God shall be glorified. God shall be glorified. God shall be glorified. What are you passing through? Is it sickness? Is it illness? Is it worries? Is it anxiety? Is it fear? God will take glory in his name. His name will be glorified in Jesus' name. Wherever you go this year, the Spirit of God will go with you. Whatever you request in his name this year, in the scripture says, whatever we ask when we will pray. That is whatever we desire when we will pray. We should believe that we have received. And I am believing that we have received from God. We have received our peace in Jesus' name. We have received our joy in Jesus' name. We have received our health in Jesus' name. We have received our financial breakthroughs in Jesus' name. And as for this nation, United States of America, it shall be well with every one of us in Jesus' name. And I am remembering to pray for this pastor and his family. The one who God had made the lamb at the lamb of this church. No evil shall put his light out in Jesus' name. His light will continue to shine and shine and shine all till the day of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. And as for you who believed, it is well with you. In Jesus' name, my friend. Amen.
we consider our text, I think we need to be reminded that this is a parable. The parables were simple stories relating to everyday life. These simple stories had spiritual meaning. Daring treasure, this hidden treasure. Now, for most of us, burying treasure in the ground is unheard of. Uh -huh. I mean, it was a, a thing of the past. People will hide their money in the old coffee cans. <laughs> Hide it somewhere. Some of y'all got a little stash now. But most people nowadays put their treasures, if they have them, in a more secure bank or some type of high yield interest account or EFTs or stocks or some even buy Bitcoin, Bitcoins. Uh, some even have vaults in their homes. However, in, in Jesus' day, it was not uncommon for people to bury their valuables in the ground. They hid it for security purposes. Uh, the land in and around Jerusalem had been ravaged by war uh, for centuries. Jerusalem and Israel have had so many wars and those who have pilled, pilled, uh, uh, pilfered their communities. And, uh, the people had grown accustomed to foreign countries and foreign armies invading the land plundering whatever they could find and use it as the spoils of war. Most of them kept their valuable possessions hidden in the ground and out of sight and unknown to others. And so as the parable of the leaven, which was before and the one following him, the, the parable of the pearl of grace, great price, this parable, this parable is largely interpreted in one of two ways. The parable of the hidden treasure. Some view the man who found the treasure as Jesus Christ, our Lord. And uh, the treasure that he found was representative of the church. Others view the treasure as the gospel of Christ, the good news. And the man in the parable representing those who discover the gospel and are saved by the grace of God. I view it considering the latter one, seeing the gospel as the treasure that the saved are privileged to find. And so today, dear hearts, as we consider the implications of Jesus' teaching, I want to discuss the hidden treasure. Y'all got a few minutes? First of all, let's look at the details of the treasure. Scripture says, and the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Treasure. Treasure. Look at those details. First of all, look at the value of this treasure. Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to treasure that is hid. 
treasure that is hid. Yeah, go ahead and take her out. Take her out. Treasure that is hid. The word treasure reveals something of great value. Something very precious to possess. Such value will motivate the attitude and actions of the man in the parable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As believers, we can see the great value of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is of great value. I don't know about you, but I, I think finding Christ is of great value. Value. And I hear somebody say amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and this, this salvation, this Christ in me, this gospel is very precious to possess. Uh -huh. Don't you take it lightly. And this value will motivate the attitude and the actions of those like that man in the parable. All right. Yeah. You have to value your treasure. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, as believers, we, we can see this value of Jesus Christ. It, it reveals the great sacrifice made on our behalf. Yeah, it, it reveals how Jesus gave himself. Go ahead, Jesus gave himself. I'm going to preach it anyway. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jesus gave himself. The atoning sacrifice for sin. Jesus gave himself, atoned for our sin, yes. redeeming us unto himself and reconciling us yes. to God. Yes. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, Paul, Paul said it in, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, for he had made himself to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He who was righteous all along made himself to be sin like us, identified with us, reconciling us with God so that we, our sinful selves, can be the righteousness of God in him. Thank you, God, Jesus, for taking my place. Thank you for restoring my relationship with God. Hallelujah. But not only did he reconcile us, but he, he, he got up from the grave with a, with a glorious resurrection. And because he got up, mankind is offered salvation and eternal life. Salvation. More than just going to heaven when I die. Salvation means redemption. I have a new relationship with God. Salvation means deliverance. Nothing in this world can hold me down. Nothing can defeat me. Because I have Christ. And greater is he who's in me. Than he that's in the world. That, that's a great treasure. I, I can look and I feel most of us have dark days. Most of us have days that challenges us spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, mentally. But whatever the challenge is, because you have this treasure inside, it gives you hope and knowledge that you can make it through. And God will not leave you in your situation. You are a winner. As a matter of fact, the Bible says you're more than a conqueror. Through Christ, through him who loved us. Salvation. 
Salvation also means we have an inheritance. Praise the Lord. Some things are just promised to us. Hallelujah. Just because you're a child of God. I got an inheritance. I, I don't hope God's going to bless me. I expect God to bless me. He promised it. I hold him to it. He has never lied before and he won't lie today. If he said it, that settles it. And he has a great inheritance. And uh, it also tells me that he'd give me peace. That passes all the stuff. That's what salvation means. This, this is a great treasure. Don't you take it for granted. Salvation and eternal life. Yeah, that, that means I have eternal life. Not going to have. But I have. Did you hear what John 3.16 says? For God so loved the world, say it, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. You've got it right now. Possess it right now. It's not when you're going to die, but you've got everlasting life right now. That means I, I'm in constant communion with them. Yes. Not only am I in constant communion, but I, I have blessed assurance that he'll never leave me. I have a guaranteed future. Everlasting life. What a value. What a value. But also look at the view. He said again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure here. Here in a field. Jesus declares the treasure was here. Treasure was covered. The treasure was concealed in the ground. We don't have any details concerning the treasure other than it was hidden and it was found by a man. The treasure was out of view. Unfortunately, this remains true today. Many of us have the treasure, but it's out of view. Is hidden the gospel. The things of God remain hidden to the majority. Where's the light? Where's the proclamation? Where's the joy? Where, where's the peace? We all shout and sing about He gave me peace, He gave me joy. And then when you leave here, you start worrying and fussing and cussing like everybody else. That treasure you say you got is here. Oh, it isn't because God has refused to reveal this treasure, but most have no desire to discover them. The majority today is uninterested in the, in the gospel. Majority of folk are not interested in a relationship with Christ. Now, I'm going to say something very deep. A great majority of church folk are not interested in having a relationship with Christ. I just want to have church. Some of y'all just wait for me right now. Right now, get to that hooping ball. Make it good, make it good, brother. This is the good part right here. Uh, a lot of folk are far more concerned with the ways of the world and the desires of the flesh. Uh, they, they're concerned about what's, what's trending on TikTok. They every day, all day on that, that book face. <laughs> <laughs> I want to 
see what the ladies mean is. They, they want to put out their little in the version of the latest trend. They, a lot of you, yeah, you, you want to put out what Beyonce was talking about? Cuff it. Want to see what, what's the latest celebrity gossip? You want to see? <laughs> it's rough through this part, ain't it? See what the latest style is. What's going on? You ain't interested in no revealing the treasure. The treasure is here. But look at the discovery of that treasure. Jesus also reveals the circumstances surrounding the discovery of this great treasure. The providence. He said, when a man, uh huh, uh, which when a man had found the treasure hidden the fan in the field, but when a man had found the problem is there's no mention of the man seeking the treasure, but he just found it. Are you listening to me? Got about five more minutes worth. He found the treasure. And the only information we have is that he found the treasure and it appears that providence led him to this great discovery. Right. I don't believe he stumbled across it right. or found it by mere luck or happenstance. Okay. Providence, God brought him to the place where the treasure was right. and revealed it to him. So, Reverend, what's your point? I don't know about you, but I am thankful for the providential hand of God in my life. Mm -hmm. And if you're honest, there, there was a time in my life where I knew I felt lost. And undone before God. What you talking about, Pastor? I thought you were PK. I am. I, I was raised up in church. In this church every Sunday. Sunday school. Morning worship. Afternoon service. BTU. Prayer meeting. Choir rehearsal. Mission meeting. But to all of that, there was a time I felt that I wasn't quite right. I was undone. I knew that Jesus was the means of salvation, yet. I was not seeking him. Knew all I can quote every scripture you want. But I was not seeking a relationship with Christ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but through the guidance of the Holy Ghost, the Lord led me to the great treasure of the gospel. Ah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. What a treasure. And I, I wasn't seeking it. It was all around me, but I wasn't looking for it. But he revealed the truth unto me. Before that time, it was hidden to me as well. But on that faithful day, I'll never forget it. One, one Thursday evening, the Lord touched me and opened my eyes and revealed the truth and gave me a new start and a, a new eternal truth to the gospel and his will for my life. So I, I come to, and I'm not the only one who got that testimony. Everyone here, God revealed the truth to you. So who you are, God made you. 
what you have, God gave you. Where you are, God brought you. What you know, God taught you. Paul said, by the grace of God, I am that I am. Yeah, yeah, so, so as we look at that providence, then we ought to look at the perception. The perception. Yeah, the perception. Finding this great treasure, the man immediately, when he found the great treasure, what did he do? He rehid it. I wish y'all had time. I wish I had time. I'm not making this up. It's right there. He rehid it. Ah, and uh, then he sold everything he possessed and got all his money, went back and bought that field where the treasure was hidden. He was, he was confident that he had found a possession of great value. And he recognized the quality and the worth of this treasure. Yeah, yeah. What, what a great parable. Now, I know there's some controversy con concerning this parable among skeptics uh, for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, some claim that the man's action was unethical and that he did not disclose the treasure prior to purchasing the field. Uh -huh. And uh, this argument lacks substance. Uh, such treasure would have been known to the original owner had he been the one who buried the treasure. Also, the law provided the right to keep, which was discovered as long as the rightful owner was dead or unknown. Uh-huh. And so find his keepers. <laughs> Lose his weakness. Uh -huh. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Oh, that kind of came out. Yeah. Uh, he was confident. And he knew. But, but that... That other argument, the, the law provided that right, but secondly, some argue that the parable presents the possibility of purchasing one's salvation. If the, if the treasure is the gospel and he went and sold everything he had and purchased this gospel, you, you cannot purchase your salvation. And I'm gonna talk about that in one second, but, but the principle Jesus sought to convey was the man's perception of the great value of this treasure, how he viewed it, how he viewed it. And I'm, I'm thankful the Lord revealed this treasure to me and gave me the wisdom to comprehend the great value of it. There it is. Somebody, somebody got deliverance right now. Oh, glory. What you've been seeking for. It's yours. That joy, that peace. God said, stop looking. I got it. Seek him. And he'll, oh, that, that is healing in the room. Mm. 
He was willing to sacrifice everything that he owned in order to secure this one possession. Wasn't going to let anything he possessed get in the way of him securing this treasure. Now Jesus was not teaching works on, on a merit-based salvation, but this reveals those who, when they come to a realization of the gospel, you desire it above all else. You're willing to part with anything that you possess in this life that will hinder your possession of the treasure of salvation. Oh, glory. 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 He will abandon every pleasure and possession known to man. And yet, it will pale in comparison to what God has. When the man found this treasure, and I want to say this, I'm going to go on. Glory. Glory. When he had found, he hid it, and for joy thereof, goeth and sell it for the joy. That's the satisfaction. Jesus revealed this man joyfully sold everything he had. And I don't know about you, but I understand just what that man feels. The songwriter said, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence. Daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. I'm dating myself, but the correct caravans had a song out in the early 60s. They just simply said, I trade. A lifetime. I just one thing in paradise. In paradise. Okay. Somebody, somebody, somebody right here. You have an issue with your child. You know what it is? And God knows. But I want you to know that God can fix it. Yeah. If that's someone as you, I don't want you to come to the aisle. Just stand where you are. Just stand where you are. I simply tell you to you don't understand everything man. there's some things you'll never understand and the Bible says Stop leaning to your own understanding. Hey! But in all your ways, and your comforts, yeah, just realize that he's God. He's in control. He knows all. Direct your path.
Way. 